Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Hope you're having an incredible, incredible day and may peace be upon you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me, your host, Dr. Izdiha Jamil. And today I have a special guest, a good friend of mine. We had a couple of riffs before because he was being a little bit naughty. But today I have my friend with me, Zach Aaron, who is the transformational leadership coach and a professionally trained speaker. So Zach, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to be here, Izzy. Thank you so much. So today, Zach and I, we're going to be talking about leadership redefined or leadership that matters, because whether we like it or not, this is a topic that we encounter every day in our lives. That doesn't necessarily mean that we want to be a leader or raise our hand, hear me, pick me to be a leader, but it is something that we encounter every single day, whether it's in our family life, it's our children, in our relationship, in our neighbors, with our clients, and what have you not. So before that, I'm just going to bring Zach in and let him say a little bit hello and give him a little bit of background about how he started. Because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Zach, you were in corporate before, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, he was like, yeah. That yeah, was like I was. A long time um, ago. Well, the topic being leadership that matters, I... I do have a story I, about that corporate experience that I, I'd love to share a little bit on because yeah, absolutely go you ahead. Know, 20, I was 22 years old and was interviewing for my first job, my first real job out of college. Right. And we're in the interview. I've, you know, Jim, he's sitting there, Matt's back there and then John. So we're in this lounge area and there's a giant coffee table sitting in the middle of the room and Jim, he's leaning over this giant flip chart. Like you, the, the post-it, the flip charts. Right, and he right. Had, he had it sat, just laid out on the coffee table. He had this giant Sharpie in his hand and he's writing some notes and he looks up at me. He's like, you know, Zach, I was wondering. <laughs> I've never been asked this question before. He's like, you know, I was wondering if you could have anything written on your tombstone, what would it be? You know, <laughs> he had this Southern accent, he was from Tennessee. And I was like, Phew. and I looked at him, I said, you know, I, I want to be a respected leader. I want to be somebody that um, my team can trust and know that I'm always going to work towards developing them and helping them reach their, their fullest potential. And that, that just came from the heart. I didn't have that prepared in a college career class, you know, and that's when it all started. Now, 11 years goes by. I'm now vice president of sales, married. Uh, my wife mm -hmm. and I, three daughters, Claire, Sophie, and Thea. And Thea, who's now four, was just born back then. Mm -hmm. And I was on my way to the country club to have a drink with my CEO, Chad. And, and I go in and I see Chad sitting in the corner and we're, we're not even through our first drink. And he says, Zach, I'm, I got to make some changes to the, the company and change the leadership team. Mm. And I go home that night, I tell my wife, like, I'm not on the leadership team anymore. I got demoted. I don't want to mm. do a sales role. I, I know I could, but yeah. So several months go by and I get my review from the guy who replaces me, uh, Michael. And he tells me, he's like, Zach, you're, you're a good soldier, but mm -hmm. that's not leadership. When I heard that it rocked my world because all I ever wanted to do was be a great leader. I mean, if you would have known all the leadership books I read, all the yeah. seminars and podcasts, like I was, I was immersed in that world, how to be a leader. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was right though. And it was later confirmed. I called my best friend, Ben, you know, I was, um, worked alongside Ben for 11 years and I told him what Michael told me. And Ben told me is the phone got really quiet and he said, Zach, you know, I gotta mm -hmm. tell you, man, he said, I don't know. It was like, you were trying so hard, like you're forcing things. It was kind of awkward. I mm -hmm. remember that word. It was kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Okay. And he said, he's like, you know, if you would just stop trying to prove yourself and trust in who you are. You, you have no idea the impact you've had on me in my life. I wouldn't be here if it was, wasn't for you. I wouldn't be achieving my potential here mm -hmm. if it wasn't for how you showed up for me all these years. And that's when it hit me. Leadership starts from within. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I realized like all along, I was trying to be a better leader and trying to be a leader and follow all the, you know, the eight laws to this and the seven 22 yeah. steps to that. And I realized that all along leadership was within me and it was a matter of just trusting it. And 
that's kind of how I've come to be a coach now. And I help other leaders tap into that and make leadership a self, uh, uh, instead of trying to prove yourself, leadership mm-hmm. is about self-expression mm-hmm. and self-expression of your values and what matters to you and, and creating that into whatever you're doing, whether it's in business and life and a family, mm-hmm. you create that through that expression. That is like and um, like a different point of view that I haven't heard before that leadership is within you. And often than not, you know, when you're in school or in your workplace, you've asked to prove yourself, right? That you can deliver, that you can do this. And it's always more and more and more and more and more. Like how much more? Like it goes like to infinity. Now yeah. talk about what is, what do you mean by this leadership that within and how can you trust it? How can you trust it? When, I'll give you an example, when I was in college, you know, we have group projects, right? So a lot of the time, you know, obviously people call me bossy, people call me demanding, too organized, and it kind of knocked me down. But what I care about is being, being the best or being like, you know, ex- excelling at school and having that. And the funny part is that when it comes to project, when all those people are saying those things about me, when it comes to choosing the team, guess whose team they want to be in? Mine. Mm-hmm. So I want you to kind of break it down. What do you mean by leadership within? And how can you kind of break through from the society that is kind of labeling you a certain way? Um, and how do you trust? How do you trust who you are? Yeah, there's so much to unpack there. I love the question. Um, because just because you're not trying to prove yourself doesn't mean you're not improving yourself. You're not trying to improve and grow. Um, one of my values is growth. So being the best really resonates with me too. It's why, why, why do anything else? Right. Yeah. Um, but I get to define that nobody else is going to define what the best means. Mm -hmm. I only, I define that. Um, you know what you're, how do you trust yourself? There is a book written, I think in the early nineties, mid nineties, Nathaniel Brandon has spent his life studying Mm self-esteem and this particular book's called the six pillars of self-esteem. And he boils self-esteem down like this. He says, it's really two things. It's self-efficacy, meaning confidence, confidence in yourself, confidence in your ability to figure things out, learn and grow through something, do hard things and figure it out. Right. And then the other side of that is self-worth, self-value, Mm self-love, literally intrinsically knowing that I matter. Mm -hmm. I matter. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that is the foundation of trusting yourself, having self-esteem, that that experience of I can do hard things. I can figure things out. I've looked back in the history of my life. I've, I've accomplished a lot, but I'm not doing it from a place of not feeling good enough or inadequate. I'm doing it from a place of I matter. Mm -hmm. I'm here for a purpose of, of loving myself, which sounds so strange. And especially (laughs) in the Western civil right culture, like we were taught as leaders to be selfless, sacrificial. Um, And I think that that gets generalized because I think when you are, from a place of loving yourself, you actually show up more selfless towards others. Your, your ego is transcended now and you're able to really um, lead from the inside out. And so that's my answer on how to trust yourself. You have to develop self-esteem. You have to put yourself at the bottom of another mountain and do hard things and know that you can figure things out. And you have to, you have to love yourself. You have to know that you matter. Those two things are going to lead you to you trusting yourself. And it's going to lead to you being a powerful individual. Um, that you're, you're firmly standing on your two feet, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and then from that place, leading from the inside out Mm -hmm. versus leading from the outside in. Now I know who I am. I know why I exist. I know my values. I know the impact I want to make on the world, on my team and my family. I know what I stand for. I'm going to act from the inside out and lead. Mm-hmm. versus the, the, what's more normal, especially in corporate or, or a lot of leadership positions, even entrepreneurs, yeah. they feel yeah. inadequate. They feel like they maybe even are an imposter. Like, who am I to even be here? Like, I don't really mm-hmm. deserve this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so we start to lead from the outside in, just continuing to try to live up to everybody else's expectations, make sure everybody else is happy. And in the end, at some point, maybe we don't say this out loud, but we start wondering, what about me? Mm. And resentment starts to set in. And now we start to um, lose ourselves in the process. So leading from the inside out is the only way to, to be a leader that matters, that makes a difference, in my opinion. Yes, and I like that tag phrase or declaration or intention that you matter, that I matter. It's kind of like a, a mantra. It's kind of like bringing you in that I matter. And I remember for my TED Talk, one of the things that the organizer did was that we had a, a two sessions. And one of the sessions, the lead trainer said that the first thing I wanted to say is that I am here and kind of like claiming your space. Because otherwise you're like, behind, invisible, you're hiding, you're not actually like matter yourself, putting yourself out there because you know, when you're a tech speaker, it's hard to get in because of all the processes and everything. But then when you're in, you can't be hiding. You can't be like invisible. So you matter. And then you mentioned something about um, completing things like part of confidence is actually to figure things out and um, completing things. And I feel that is also part of the stages of building your confidence. I think one of the biggest reasons that we don't have confidence in ourselves because we say something and we don't complete it, or we say something and we abandon it. Now, I want you to kind of break down for me a little bit about this confidence. And some people are like, oh, too, too much confidence, too ego, you're like, putting people off so but then there's there's a space where like you Zach I mean you have the confidence but your it's not something that you pushing into other it's something that is within you that if you feel that you walk the way you talk so kind of like break it down for me a little bit in terms of confidence like I know confidence can sometimes be hard to find when there's too many noises in your head so yeah. let's start with entrepreneurs. Like how can they be a little bit more confident by leaning in to who they are inside? Yeah. The best thing I heard about confidence um, came from a high-performance coach, uh, Michael Gervais. He, uh, mm -hmm. he uh, actually, if you've heard of Felix Baumgartner who jumped from the, the Red Bull stratosphere, he drove, jumped from the Earth's atmosphere in, in a free fall. Um, mm -hmm. And he had to wear a space suit and all of this. And um, he was claustrophobic. He, he couldn't jump. So this was a million dollar project and it was almost called off. And this was Michael Gervais came in as, as this Felix's coach to help him work through claustrophobia and, mm -hmm. and get the confidence to make the jump. And I remember Michael Gervais saying this, I think it was on a podcast. He said that confidence is simply what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm not saying is some hokey pokey, like affirmation, you know, or, you know, it's, it has to be a true, you have to mm -hmm. know that it's true. Like, it's what you tell yourself, but it has to be based in fact. Mm -hmm. And, and so to find your confidence, what, what have you overcome in your life? Mm what, what have you gone through and come out the other side victorious? And if you just tell yourself that story and remind yourself who you are, how do you, how do you think you're going to feel in that moment? Mm. Confident. You're going to be like, you know what? I, I can do this too. I did that. I can do this game on, you know? So that's a little bit of um, some simple things I've, I've learned about around confidence that I teach my clients is it is what you tell yourself. Cause the story you're telling yourself, right? We all have this inner dialogue going on mm -hmm. and the stories either that you're telling yourself are either going to create more of what you don't want or more of what you do want. So the question I was asked is like, is the story you're telling yourself going to take you to where you want to go? Is it leading you to feeling confidence? If not change the story, because I know if you've been on this planet for, you know, as long as most of us have listening to this, <laughs> you have some stories that you can can own some confidence around like you, you, you've overcome some things in your life. I know you have Izzy. Um, I know I have, I know we all have, I don't think there's a human being on this planet that hasn't done hard things and had to 
to find their confidence at some point in their life. I think that's like a like a spot on hack about confidence there to be truthful about what you tell yourself, especially on the things that you have overcome or the things that you have achieved and kind of starting from there because rather than you what do you think call it like you know when you say something but you don't feel it right you say something you affirm whatever da, 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 but you don't feel it it's in it's out of alignment it's kind of like a conflict so what you're saying here is that like you tell something about yourself that is truthful that is honest that you've overcome even though it's something as simple like for me or for any mom so oh my god it's such a big deal to get the kids out the door for school it's such a big deal the amount of thing the thousand million steps that have to happen I'm like oh my god I'm a champion like I get the kids on school early such a huge um thing so give us an example Zach of one thing that you tell about yourself that is truthful that you have overcome so that people can get a feel about you yeah well it's it's put in the work and trust the process nothing ha nothing great happens overnight so there there's this an event in my life so growing up i was probably 16 years old i decided i want to ride saddle bronx in the rodeo mm -hmm. <laughs> um and my mom lisa gets um Bruce Sturdy to train me to ride these Bronx and I get on the back and I hit the ground. I hit the ground 20 times that first Saturday, I hit the ground and I'm back at it 20 more times I hit the ground. Two years of working with Bruce and I remember him telling me in this process, Zach, ain't gonna happen overnight, brother, you're gonna have to trust the process and put mm -hmm. in the work. Well, two years go by, I've broke my hand, ankle, collarbone. <laughs> and I still haven't made it to the eight second buzzer. So in a rodeo, right, you that's the goal you, to even get a point to get a score to even qualify to to place in the round, you have to stay on for eight seconds. Well, I hadn't done that for two years. Right. Hitting the ground is all I knew. And now I'm at a rodeo and, and I remember this day, like it just slow motion. I got on the back of that horse and nodded my head, gate flies open every jump. I'm just, I'm in perfect timing. The buzzer goes off and I'm still on the back of the horse and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and then I, I look over in the stands and there's my mom and she's just on her feet going absolutely berserk. Um, like any mom would, and I go on to become two-time state champion. Hmm. And that's a story that I've learned to tell myself. Now I'm, I just kind of think of it. I'm like, you, you, you know, I know I'm speaking to myself. You know how to stick to something. You know how to trust the process. You know how to put in the work. You can do this. And mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. I'm not making any of that story up. It's so it resonates with me. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, as I tell that story, I think of other times in my life where like, where I put myself at the bottom of a mountain. And I said, no, I'm going to do this thing. And for two, three years, I stuck with it. And here I am, you know, I'm now a coach and doing what I'm doing more and more of my dream. And it has been that thought of trust the process, put in the work, just, just trust it success begins predictable when you trust the process. So that is a story that I've, I find a lot of confidence in. That is amazing. And just to check in, because you know, I wasn't born here. So a bronco, is it a bull? Is it a cow? Is it a horse? What's a bronco? So it's a wild horse. Um, wild horse. Okay. Um, like, like sometimes they're like the big Clydesdale horses. I don't know if you've ever seen a Budweiser commercial. Where the, yeah. the Clydesdales, like that's the, that would be a bronc. Um, only right. they're, they're wild. So wild as in, it's not, it's not the horses that you ride at the no. zoo. Or it's, you, it's, they don't want you on their back. Oh, oh right. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, they're, they are, they're not right. trained at all. Yeah. Right. So they're going to like basically kick you off. They don't like anything. Yeah. Like strapping to them. Okay. Got they're, it. They're beautiful animals are just such like you think of a free spirit that mm -hmm. is a bronc like they just they're wild um and yeah that is amazing like trusting the process because a lot of the times i see even in myself and even in the people around me they just want to have a shortcut you know they just want to fast track to where they want to have, um, you know, people leaving the job and suddenly the next day they want to make six figure kind of thing, but they haven't built trust in the process of haven't built the fundamentals. So 
can you just give us your point of view or your tip in kind of like busting through that myth? Because it does take some investment in terms of time, money, energy, what have you not, to trusting in the process and building in the fundamentals. And most importantly, to keep on going. Because you were like two years on, you were then 18 then, right? You still haven't lasted through that eight minute buzzer, which is yeah. in order for you to have points, you gotta be past the eight minutes buzzer or hit the eight minutes buzzer. So what's your biggest take on kind of busting through the myth of I want it now, it's gonna happen now or taking yeah. shortcuts. I mean, I'm all for shortcuts, um, but at the same time, it's also, if it's gonna be at a disservice for me, then maybe that's something that I want to reconsider. Yeah. That's a really good question. And I, you know, I was talking to a client just yesterday about this. Um, she has a big goal and she's trying to build this online business. And I asked her the question, how will you feel after you achieve the goal? You know, what mm -hmm. will it feel like to have built this online retail business that's bringing in thousands of orders every day and all this? And she said, well, I would, I would, it would feel just like I would be experiencing inner peace, she said. She said, I would have more presence and I'd feel more confident and I would feel more um, open and mm -hmm. fulfilled. Those are the words I often hear from clients. I feel like I'm making an impact. And what's interesting is so often we, we put X in front of Y. We put so much in front of those feelings that we ultimately want. I've got to get the goal accomplished. I've got to stay on the back of that horse for eight seconds right. and, and win for me to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a broken strategy because mm -hmm. it's actually backwards. It's when you actually can begin with inner peace, begin with impact and fulfillment and happiness that is going to create the conditions for you to actually create the results you want. So how do we go about experiencing those feelings and emotions right now today? And the best way I know to, to explain that is we all have dreams. If you're listening to podcasts, you have dreams, you have big goals and getting really clear on what it is you desire to build and create in your life and your business or whatever it is, but then not seeing it as necessarily a destination, seeing it as a way of being, mm -hmm. meaning when you have the goal, um, who would I be being? If I would, if, if I have accomplished that, you know, like I want, I have a dream of being a transformational coach to over a million people. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask myself every day, how would a transformational coach, a world-class coach think, talk, show up? What, what habits would he have? What, what practices, daily practices? And then I need to start being that today. And that when you, when you start being that you kind of fall in love with the journey. It's this idea of putting yourself at the bottom of a mountain. But the beautiful thing is nobody climbs Mount Everest for the hell of it. You know, they do it to experience the journey. So your goal isn't a place to get to, right? You're not just trying to get there as fast as possible. It's like, no, that is, that's a broken strategy. How do we put ourselves at the bottom and get to work, but not see it as work? How do we find kind of this energy around this is who I'm being the person that yeah. I desire to be? And then all of a sudden, all the success and all the outcomes and the goals, they just kind of, they follow. They're just, they just happen. Um, you start to attract your dreams that your dreams start to chase you instead of you always chasing and running after the next thing, which is just exhausting. Absolutely. And the, the chasing part, right? Like going after it, going after it, go down, rather, rather than saying is you know be who you're meant to be now the happiness yeah. the joy the love the the creativity the freedom who it is from you now and then the dreams the people the opportunities is going to show up to you in the most divine manner and the most perfect timing um because you are it you know your work you matter you, you know you point into yourself you matter you know who you are you know how you're going to be um, conversating with other people so that is you know something that I am uh, you know very well appreciative of what you're saying mm -hmm. and then kind of like taking that perspective right who you are being now how can we take that a little bit of expansion now how can we take that into other areas of life 
because what I'm wanting is a world-class family, a world-class business, a world-class relationship with uh, my husband, a world-class relationship with my spirituality, a world-class relationship with my community. So how can we expand that? Because in the book, Tim Grover, Unstoppable, who is Michael Jordan's trainer, he says that well, he calls it the cleaner, like the best, his term is the cleaner. So in order for you to be the cleaner, it's either that or, you know, one thing is up and one thing is down. So if you be in the past at uh, Michael Jordan was a, uh, not football, what would, uh, basketball, basketball player. Um, but then his family life isn't, you know, it's either, either or. Now, I want to have all those relationships working for me. Yes, it's a juggle. Some of it is out of balance. But those are important to me. So let's talk about a little bit about expansion before we wrap up, Zach. So yeah. what are your tips to have like a leadership expansion that you see? Because you're a dad, you're a husband, you're into your community, you're an entrepreneur, you're a coach, you're a speaker. So how can we have that expansion of leadership based on who we are and leading within? Yeah, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is how how we do anything is how we do everything. Mm -hmm. um, as I thought about that to myself, here's, here's what came, I'm going to be honest. Um, what type of dad am I being? Mm -hmm. And it's a good indication of whether, here's how I boiled it down. There are times, um, maybe I'm the only one, but my girls just get under my skin you know, and I all I'm short with them. I have no patience <laughs> and it's just like, go to bed, you know, like, ah, um, I'm not proud of that, but there's, there's moments where I just will snip at them. And, and if I apply that saying, well, how you do anything is how you do everything. So what's going on here. And this is, I mean, this is real for me. I've kind of been through this, um, recently, like, okay, wait a minute. And Here's what I boiled it down to is when I get in that state, I'm living from a place of fear instead mm -hmm. of faith, mm -hmm. faith being an inner knowing an inner trust, inner peace, mm -hmm. just knowing that things will happen when they're going to happen. I'm here for a reason. And my life is my life matters. Right. And I, I can just trust that. That's what I mean by faith. I don't necessarily mean a religious faith. I mean, kind of just an inner spiritual knowing and when I'm in fear, it shows up very subtly, though. I'm telling myself a story around, I don't have enough people signing up for my next workshop, or I, yeah. I, I, things aren't going as fast as I want them to. And, did it, and you kind of get all tangled up in the fear and like, see this thing's, the, sh the other shoe's about to drop and we get into this fear, worry, self-doubt. And then the kids come home and we're like, quiet, you know, just, just <laughs> quiet. But it, it has nothing to do with them. And so it, it's, so I'm not sure I'm answering your question, um, but this idea of expansion and letting yourself just be present, mm -hmm. the only way to do that is come from everything with a place of, from a place of love, impact, mm -hmm. um, and faith it, for me, this is how mm -hmm. I've landed on it. Like, and whenever I feel that I call it dissonance, you know, there's resonance. You kind of talked yes. about that alignment where just things kind of just are happening for you. Things almost feel effortless. Then there's yeah. other times where it just feels like this uphill grind. And, and oftentimes there's resonance when things are going well, there's dissonance when you're, you're wrestling with something. And that's a good time to pause and being like, asking yourself a couple questions. What do I need? Maybe that I'm not getting right now, mm -hmm. or what do I need to start saying no to because it's not working for me. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, you're telling yourself a story of something you should be doing ought to be doing. Um, you're shooting on yourself instead of actually just trusting more that intuitive place of what's going to serve you now. Um, that's, that's what really works for me. Now, the other side of that is still work. It's still discipline. There's still, you know, you still got to do stuff that's uncomfortable. Like it's not all kumbaya, but there's a fine line. There's a fine line between it working for you and it not working for you. And you actually getting diminishing returns. 
So yeah, I think that's spot on. Like you talking about, hang on a minute and taking a pause, right? When you feel yeah. this a um, uh, contradiction or something like out of alignment or out of resonance, um, you take a pause, take a breather um, and kind of like let yourself settle in or uh, the word that you use, finding the, the, the trust and the inner peace. When you, when you mentioned about the inner peace, I just remember, you know, Kung Fu Panda 2, you know, where Poe is like, you know, he's fighting his body with pain. He had so much headache. He's fighting, it, fighting, fighting it. But then when the goat tells him to just let it flow, let it flow, let everybody flow and allow yourself to remember. And suddenly he was like busting through dragon balls, right? Like pushing through yeah. dragon balls, like the power of it. And I love that part about the pause, you know, let's take a pause, let's take, take a breather. And I know sometimes when we're working really hard, kids come home and be like, oh my God, like you start to get like, ugh, with them, but actually taking a pause and communicate it with them because they don't know what's going on. All they want is your attention. They want to mm -hmm. hang out with you because they're your dad. You're, I mean, you're, you're the dad or I'm the mom. Mm -hmm. So Zach, let's wrap up with this kind of conversation of leadership that matters. Um, about trust, about faith, about leadership, uh, uh, peace, about from within, taking out from you who within, leading from within who you are from the space of joy, love, and compassion. Let's wrap it up with this question. What is one fun thing that you do that people don't know about and you can't say coffee? What is one fun thing that you do that nobody knows about? Well, besides coffee... Um, yes, fun besides thing. coffee. Fun is something I could use some help with. I don't, <laughs> that's, all, I, I don't like that question. I, I, I love the question. I don't like that. I don't have a great answer for you. That's better said. Um, I love reading for fun. Mm -hmm. I like reading novels. I don't do it very often, but here's something recently last night. Um, the girls, my little girls just got done taking baths and my middle one, Sophie, we just, we just got a new trampoline and I just set it up and I looked at her and I'm like, let's go out on the trampoline. And mm -hmm. we were jumping and doing somersaults for about 30 minutes before bed, which probably not the best decision, but <laughs> we were out there in the backyard on the trampoline. So that was, that might be my new fun thing um, is jumping on the trampoline. That is so cool with yeah. you doing flip flops or somersaults <laughs> or backflip and everything. I'm a little sore today. Yeah. But, yeah, and I'm banging your head to places, but then get back up again. That is so cool. And how, how big is a trampoline? Is it like the mini one or did you actually get the playground size? The giant yeah, the, one. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's big. <laughs> it takes yeah. up our whole backyard. It's pretty big. <laughs> Well, one thing for sure, once we get to your place, my kids goes, yeah, let's go to Zach's yeah. trampoline and jump, jump on board, which is fantastic. Zach, thank you so much for the conversation today and for sharing with us leadership that matters, that can be impactful to others. And more importantly, starting from yourself and trusting who you are and the, the person within you to lead other people with kindness, compassion, joy, or whatever that your value is. So thank you so much, Zach, for hanging out with me. And can you let everybody know what is the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah. So I have a podcast as well, the Create Purpose podcast. Um, if you go to my website, www.createpurpose.net, um, you'll, you'll find a link to the podcast and um, you can follow me on Instagram at Zach.Aaron. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are listening, for those who would love to be, um, share your voices on prestigious platform with being a best-selling author, TV, magazines, media, Forbes, etc. Uh, check out isdihajamil.com. And Zach, again, once again, thank you so much for joining me. For those of you who are listening and watching, tell yourself, yes, I can. And so it is done. Zach, come and say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>